Hello again and welcome to my channel. Yesterday a small disaster struck. My main system preamplifier brain went berserk. It went completely crazy. So today we're going to be playing through a different preamp. It's a little one sitting behind this blue box. It's also a fine preamp, so I don't think we're going to be losing much. But the sub subject today is not the preamp. It is that blue box. And if you look closely, you will see the name. It says Lyric. And that's a very respectable name for the brand that produced some very, very fine tape recorders. As the subject states today, we're going to be looking at the Fred. Fred is a little brother in the family. It's a very interesting machine. And it has a beautiful older sister, Frida. And here is Frida. It is an absolutely gorgeous girl. And it is a great tape machine in many respects. So perhaps at some later date we're going to do a video on that machine as well. But today the subject is its little brother. If you open this blue case, what we see inside is a very interesting piece of gear. You see, it's even got a handle in the front, so it can be simply moved around as a briefcase. It's not a heavy piece, and the whole idea was it was a portable editing machine, which means somebody in the field recording the audio would be able to put it on this machine and do some editing. Editing would not require super high quality but it got some nice features required for the editing specifically. As you can see, the machine is fairly compact. It's only about three inches tall, but it's loaded with features required for field editing. Number one, it can take 12 inch reels. It also has two speeds, seven and a half and 15 inches per second. It got, of course, the timer and splicing block. One interesting feature here is it's a variable speed. It says X2, which means very broad range of adjustment. In reality, I think it's more like X3. That's a, that's a huge range. Machine doesn't have a fixed speed. So if you would like to use it for anything other than simple editing, you probably want to calibrate that speed. And I've just done that. I played a 400 Hertz tape recorded on very accurate machine. And I adjusted this control so the output read exactly 400 Hertz. So at this point, the machine is suitable for music introduction. If you look close, closely at this layout, you will see that machine doesn't have your typical capstan or pinch roller. It is simply because the machine has no capstan. It only has two motors, two side motors, or real motors. And it relies on the electronic control of those two motors to move the tape at constant speed, which is a not very trivial task. But in reality, it does so very, very well. If you look at the structure on top, you'll see this is just a roller it does nothing, it just spins and controls the tape di uh, direction. But this one has a tachometer associated with it. 
And this one does two things. It controls speed and it also controls your ability to stop and start and run the counter. So here is a better view of a head block. You only see two heads. There's a playback head and an eraser head. An erasing head is used in conjunction to the switch behind this block to do some selective erasing. You also see the very important tool, which is the cutter. That's typically the part of editing process. Again, the whole configuration of this machine reflects its particular purpose. And one aspect of that uh, purpose is that machine doesn't have any analog signal outputs. It only has a speaker and its volume control. Now the question is, is the machine suitable in some way for high quality sound reproduction? Well, we get to it in a little bit of time in more details. But let me just say that with some minor modification, it becomes a very reasonably sounding machine. So you can enjoy listening to it. And that's what I usually do in my office. Most of the time this machine resides there and it plays 15 inch per second tapes very, very well. In order to do that, I installed a pair of RCA jacks on the back of this machine. It is a very simple surgery. It doesn't affect machine's operation, but it allows you to get clean signal out. Unfortunately, it's not balanced signal. The machine is not balanced internally, but this is what you get. Now let's take a look inside of this wonderful machine. And basically what you are seeing is mostly the drive electronics for the two side motors. There's a power supply in the middle, control board, and the motors. It is very simple. You don't see any analog circuit. Just a little bit, I presume that's this one below. And as you can see, RCA connectors can go directly to the volume part, and it works very well. Very simple machine. So it got a lot of criticism from audiophiles who saying that speed control is awful and uh, speed variations are huge, so it's not usable for audio. And in general sense, it is true. It is not a machine on which you would like to play your reference 15-inch tapes if you're looking for ultimate quality. But like I said, it uh, still has amazingly good voice. So for whatever it is, it's an interesting machine. At one point, I actually measured its uh, speed fluctuations and I found it to be quite good. It wasn't on par on some better professional machines, of course, but it was uh, not much worse than typical or very good consumer models, which is a great achievement considering this simple and effective topology for the mechanism. So now we have it all connected to the system and the preamp activated and we are ready to play music. The drill is gone. One, two.
So hopefully you agree with my assessment that uh, its sound quality is not too bad at all. You can actually play it in some serious systems and be happy with bounce sound. Now, since you know me, obviously it had to have platters. And besides just the platters, it can play large platters up to 12 inch in diameter which is a very nice feature. It has a reasonably good counter and you can reset it, rewind. You have no, just a normal function. No search facility of any kind, which would be nice to have, but uh, again, this is a bare bone machine. It's designed for one simple purpose in mind. These machines are not easy to find. I have been approached many times with offers to sell either Fred or Frida. And I always refuse because I know it's impossible to replace. Even in Europe, I was talking to some people in Europe and they told me that even in that part of Europe, those machines are very, very uncommon. Lyric also made very large studio type tape recorder and I have seen pictures of it but I never seen it in reality. That would be something I would love to have perhaps and at least to look and try and operate. As you can see this is a very clean sample. It's very very hard to find it in this condition. Most of the time, when they pop up for sale, they are in <laughs> very serious state of use. 